this morning we're at Starry Grad instead of Havar because it was too rough over there. But this used to be the capital before Havar. And indeed, the Greeks were the ones uh, who established the first settlement on the on the island. Uh, they had their first trading colony, and they named it Pharos. When the Slavs later on reached the Croatian coastline and they reached the Croatian islands, uh, they slowly started, well, I say, changing the name. The name was corrupted. So from Pharos, it was changed to Far, and then to Havar. So the name. When the Greeks started colonizing the Croatian coastline, back um, uh, in those days, with their wood, wooden boats, they could cover a distance of maximum 25 nautical miles, which means that almost every 50 nautical miles, the Greeks would establish a trading colony. And there's the fortress on top of that hill. Starica. Yeah, yeah. Starica. 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 And then you took the bus here. Now this is the southwest we're at the uh, local outdoor market. Could be in Mexico. Much smaller than the one in Zagreb, of course. Here we have a deli. Oh, pastries. Those look yummy. Lots of fruit. This is the side gate entrance to the town. Not very fancy. The nobles lived in this part of the town. Gothic and Renaissance always looks. You don't get like in Italy clear Renaissance. It's always a little bit of Gothic in it because they're little backwaters. Possible to do you know, to do a well. They collected rainwater so it's more of a cistern. There are 200 years that we don't really know what's happening here because nobody writes anything down and it probably was the end of the 7th century, the 8th century and the Croatians were pagans, they were not Christians. It took them th almost 300 years to actually take the Christian religion. So as they came down, they burned and everything, all the churches were burned down. A Hungarian king and he, maybe he was a gambler but he wanted money. So he sold it, sold the whole of Dalmatia for a hundred thousand ducats to the Venetian Republic. Mm. And then this became Venice for 400 years from 1409 until 1797 when Napoleon broke down the Venetian Republic. Mm. He also broke down the uh, Republic of Dubrovnik. The lion had in his hand. And um, in this case, the book Closed. And that means that this building was built in the time of war. Mm -hmm. When the book was open, it was a time of peace. Then there was education. And also their motto written on this book, Ora et Labora, Pray and Work. And the Benedictinians are very shy, actually. They don't go out of their monasteries just because they don't need to. And they were also in the past very important for the education of young women. You can go into the monastery, like to a school. In those days, women were not educated, but especially the noble, the noble girls, so you go to the nunnery and get some education, learn how to sew and how to read. Them. They use the agave to make lace. It's the same agave they have in Mexico that they make tequila from. They prefer wine and use the agave for lace. They take the fibers out of the leaves. It looks like this. Of course, they take long ones. They do an effort. They sort them by color. They keep them. They sit them. They never tell us. They sort them. And then they make these laces. Every lace looks different. They design themselves. And they are kind of sensitive. For a lace scarf, a stick, you pay up to 500 euros. Mm -hmm. Change it only, there's no round number. It costs 
This is a caper plant that grows here because it likes the limestone. So before the flower opens, we pick them. Put salt water on it so that this salt um, pull the bitterness out of the capers. Put it in the sun, let it evaporate, and then you put it in uh, homemade vinegar. This is a palace up here. This square of and this is more capers growing on the side of the building. This building is definitely Renaissance. This is a cathedral, and they're telling us the time. Bell Tower. It's higher than the rest of the loads. It gets higher as it goes up. And the, the, the narrow openings are narrower, narrower as it goes up, and there are more of them. And this makes this elongation effect. And that is typical mannerism. St. Stephen, he was a pope in 250. Christianity was illegal at the time around here. They had to have their church in secrecy. So they had church in the tombs in Rome. Mm -hmm. And the Roman um, soldiers found out about this and they went in there and they killed these Christians there and they beheaded the Pope, Stephen, and that is why he was there. This door was for the commoners into the church and this door was for the noblemen. Hmm. 1611 is the date here. First year of peace under Venetian rule. There's the Lion of St. Mark. The first municipal theater open to commoners in Europe. Typical Renaissance shop window. The door, the window, and the counter to conduct business. The first pass register. It's a hole of 10 centimeter, like a circle of 10 centimeter in the middle, and that's where the coins go in. This is why we are not docked here. This is protected from the open sea. It is still very rough. Napoleonic Wars, the Russians were out here on this little island. And they bombed the town that the French were holding. In 1971, luckily, we had the fortress. That fortress was finished in 1551. And all the people went up to the fortress looked on how their town got destroyed, also the arsenal, the cathedral and everything, their houses, but they were safe. Nobody was caught, no women were taken away, they were slaves. And you know, the Turkish, they like to catch little boys. This was an Illyrian fortress in the 1300s. So the fortress started to be built in the 13th century. It took a very long time. They built it, the cost of the building was by the selling of salt. They sold salt and then they covered the costs. And then of course it was finished in 1551, so it took a long time to build. And then, 20 years later, it exploded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a warning bell from the 1600s, the, the original bell. We can say we were not in the war. Huh? Only thing that we, of course, our young men had to go and fight in the army. And also, of course, all the refugees came here. It's a town hall. With their coat of arms holding in their courts. And uh, in the time of Venice, that was the courthouse. So if you were found guilty in the courthouse, you were put on the pole of shame. You see this pole a little bit to the left? Uh, it also has a lion down. So you were put there, and then the townspeople can throw you with rotten eggs and tomatoes and things. If you were, of course, got the death sentence, you were either stoned or your head were cut off when you were noble or you were hanged if you were a common person. We're up on a big patio up here next to the arsenal. Come around the corner and it's even brisker over here. The beach in here is quite sheltered. But it is solid rock. Well, not solid rock, but almost evidently one of these towns that the uh, rich and famous have decided to congregate at. 
and the examples we were given of Americans is Demi Moore and Beyonce. But there's a lot of expensive homes and hotels here, and in the summer the place is packed with people with lots of money. Delivery truck, and he's got these two levers on the side to operate it, and he can see where he's going. Well, that bell is really ringing. It's not a tape recording.